is gone. If you have your outlines, you can look with me at 1 Corinthians 11.25, or if you need a Bible, why, well, you can turn there. It says, After the same manner, he, Jesus, took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. I want to talk about this uh, phrase in remembrance of me. What do we want to remember when we are participating in the Lord's Supper, in the last meal that He had with them uh, before the crucifixion, the Passover? What do we want to remember? We want to remember who He is. He's the Son of God. He's the Deliverer. He's the Son of Man. He's the exact image of God, the outshining of God, according to Hebrews 1. We want to remember what He's accomplished in His obedience to Father. He's accomplished the restoration of Father's purpose in earth. What Father purposed originally in earth in the garden never went away. God never changed His mind. Father never redirected His purpose. There was no plan B. We want to remember what He did, that what it produced in man. It produced uh, redemption, deliverance, wholeness, sonship, a new creation. We want to remember these things. It's not that what... When I was young and the uh, uh, child there in the uh, church that we were in, what they told me, what you remember, was seeing Jesus on the cross. That's, that's essentially what they told me, that that's what we needed to remember. And that's not wrong. That's actually not wrong, but there's more to it than that. What he, uh, who he was and what he did. Luke 22, 19 says, He took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In remembrance. Uh, that word is something that we need to uh, make note of, that we don't forget. Um, we... We forget easily, seems like. You don't have to have a lot of years on you to forget. We get occupied with other things and we forget who we are and we forget what he's done. We don't think about. It's not in the forefront. If I'm going to be a, a disciple of Jesus, if I'm going to be, as Mr. Chambers says, devoted to him, he's in the forefront of my thinking. So in verse 20 of Luke 22, it says, Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. His blood was shed for us. We need to be able to remember that, that that's not just something that we uh, know happened, but we remember it and remember what's involved with that. And then, as I thought on this and was remembering, scriptures begin to come to me. In John 4, 10, Jesus speaking to the woman at the well, he said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that says to you, Give me to drink, you would have asked of him and he would have given you living water. He's the source of living water. He's the source of life. I need to remember this. I need to have this in the forefront of my thinking. This living water, I believe, is representative of uh, His Word and His Spirit that's, that's been given to us. He, and He has given that to us freely. John 6.32 Jesus speaking to the people that he had, he had just uh, fed them with the fishes and the loaves. He said to them, Verily, verily, I say to you, 
Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. He was telling them the bread from heaven didn't come from Moses, but God Almighty gave it to them. That was a natural thing that he did, a supernatural thing for a natural need that they had. But he says, my father gives you the true bread. Uh, the Israelites, the Jews, uh, they, they, they were still caught by the manna. They hadn't had manna since they crossed the Jordan. But they remembered what Moses did, and they did a good job of remembering. I think sometimes we as Christians don't do nearly as good a job remembering uh, what, what the Lord has provided for us in this uh, true bread that has come from heaven. He says in verse 33, the bread of God is he, the bread of God is he which comes down from heaven and gives life unto the world. That's something to think about there. He says he gives life to the world. He doesn't say the church. He gives life to the world. Might need to think on that sometime and ask what that means. 34, they said to him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He spoke it very clearly here. I need to remember this. He says, I am the bread of life. He that comes to me shall never hunger. And he that believes on me shall never thirst. <clears throat> now, that word there that's translated in, in the King James as on is the Greek word ice, which means into. He who believes into me uh, that word indicates a point reached or entered a place of time. Jesus says, I am that bread of life. Twice he says it. In verse 35 he says, I am the bread of life. And in 48 he says, I am that bread of life. He said, your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness or dead. And yet they remembered Moses and the manna. We too have much to remember to bring to our remembrance <clears throat> who he is and what he's like and what he's done. This is the bread, he said, that which comes down from heaven. He's talking about himself. This is the bread which comes down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. Well, does that mean my, my physical body's not going to die? No, I've been given eternal life in my spirit man. And then once again, in verse 51, the third time, he says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give him is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. In 53, Jesus said to them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoso eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up in, at the last day. For my flesh is meat. The word meat there means food. It's not talking about flesh. It, it's a word that it means, it means food. My flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. And he that eats my flesh and drinks my blood dwells in me, and I in him. Hallelujah. <laughs> As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eats me, even he shall live by me. I need to remember where my life comes from. We get caught up very, very much in our natural physical life. We need to be caught up at least that much and more in the life that we have in Christ, actually. <clears throat> John 6, 63 says, It is the spirit that quickens, the flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and life. He'd been speaking spirit and life to them right there at that point. 
He says, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and life. I need to remember that. I need to be able to understand that in, in, within me in, in, as the, in the measure that Father pours it out, that understanding. <clears throat> I want to say something to you here uh, in verse 54, 654. He, whoso eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. <laughs> that created a great problem uh, because many of the people said, well, what is he talking about? He, how can we eat his flesh and drink his blood? Once again, we need to understand, I think, Jesus only spoke in parables. His flesh is his word, and his blood is his spirit. That's what he was talking about. Now you say, well, we're going to participate, and, and he said, this bread is my flesh, and this cup is my blood. Yes, it is. It's representative of that. I do not believe the doctrine of transubstantiation. It doesn't become that, those uh, separate things. But it is representative of that, and it's to bring us into remembrance. However, I do believe that his presence is with us his presence is with us all the time, but I think there is a presence with, with us when we turn, literally turn our th attention on purpose to him, and he, he can and will manifest his presence to us in this. There's um, the, uh, the Western Church, particularly the fundamentalist churches, um, have, have not taught us about the presence of the Lord, the healing presence of the Lord, in the communion. There's, there's more to that than we've been taught, and there's much that we can learn to remember in respect to that. And that's all I'm going to say about that at this moment. <clears throat> verse, chapter 7, verse 37, it says, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. And then it goes on in that chapter and talks about that he's talking about the Holy Spirit, to drink of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is His, his blood. It is, his, it is wa the water of life. H how do you, do you know that in your body, your physical body, the, the water, or could I say the liquid of life is blood? The liquid of life in your physical body is blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood, the scripture says. And so he's, when he says, come to me and drink, he's making reference to what he had, what is said back in John 6, 53, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. When I drink of his spirit, when I eat of his flesh, I partake of the word, I make it part of my life. I participate in that. And then one last thing that I think that we can remember in respect to this, in remembering who he is and what he's done, Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Jesus says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He is our rest. He is my rest. He is your rest. And as we remember that uh, our rest is in Him. Our life is in Him. So as we partake today of the 
the communion. These are some things to remember, some things that you uh, bring before the Lord that you think about, meditate on, and give thanks for. Participating in the, in the communion, participating in the Lord's Supper is a time of thanksgiving. It is time of being grateful and, and thankful for all that He has provided because all that He's provided for us is in Christ. All that He's provided for us is in Christ. Amen. Father, I thank You for Your Son. I thank You for Your Word that was made flesh and dwelt among us. I thank you for your son that gave his life, his body and his blood for us. Thank you for the new covenant, the entrance into that. I thank you that he is the door into the kingdom. I thank you, Father, that we can remember these things. I thank you and I praise you in the name of your son. I thank you, Lord, for these things. Amen.